Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's summarize what we've learned so far is about the derivatives of the hyperbolic functions. When we take the derivative of the hyperbolic sine, we get the positive hyperbolic cosine. And also when we take the derivative of the hyperbolic cosine, we get the positive hyperbolic sine. When it comes to the hyperbolic tangent and cotangent, when we take the derivative of the hyperbolic tangent, we get the positive hyperbolic secant squared. But if we take the derivative of the hyperbolic cotangent, we get the negative hyperbolic cosecant squared. And then when we take the derivatives of the hyperbolic secant and the hyperbolic cosecant, notice both answers are negative. In the case of the hyperbolic secant, it's equal to the negative hyperbolic secant times the hyperbolic tangent. And in the case of taking the derivative of the hyperbolic cosecant, we get the negative of the hyperbolic cosecant times the hyperbolic cotangent. Now that we know that, we can play it in reverse, so to speak. We can now turn things around, and now we know that. So if we take the integral of the hyperbolic cosine, we get back the hyperbolic sine. And if we take the integral of the hyperbolic sine, we get back the hyperbolic cosine. Likewise, when we take the integral of the sec hyperbolic secant squared, we get the hyperbolic tangent. And if we take the integral of the hyperbolic cosecant squared, we get the negative of the hyperbolic cotangent. Then if we take the integral of the hyperbolic secant times the hyperbolic tangent, we get back the negative of the hyperbolic secant. And if we take the integral of the hyperbolic cotangent times the hyperbolic cosecant, we get the negative of the hyperbolic cosecant. So it's nice to know that it also works in reverse. And that's how it's done.